I've been uh, trying various microphones with students over a period of time, and I've noticed that some of my students are a little bit noisy in terms of boof, boof, boof on the microphone, even though we've been over it many times. Uh, I find it uh, detracts from the music, and also, I don't know, I find myself starting to bristle just a little. So, I thought, let me do a video dedicated to that and see how we might, in my experience, reduce the plosives and pops on the microphone. I don't know exactly what they are, but here's my guess of, guess of it. My guess is it's the speed of breath, the blast of breath, hitting the diaphragm. And I have my diaphragm here. The diaphragm is very light because it needs to respond to stuff. So if I do something, Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? So those blasts from there are hitting the diaphragm. You can see what happens. Manufacturers for stage mics, of course, build in kind of filters. I think the difficulty is that you need to stop or reduce the blast of breath, but sound itself is air molecules moving. So you want to let those through without altering them in any way. C'est impossible, surely. So that's why it can be a little bit of an issue. But I tell you the best thing in this sort of a three-pronged attack, start with the source, I would say. So let me show you. Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Now, if I reduce that at source, Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Back to the other way. Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? If I reduce it, Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Well, what's going on there then? Excuse me. <coughs> you don't want to distract yourself too much and you need to practice it in a bit. But it's really not having such a weight of breath waiting to escape that when you open from the P, it all comes flying out. You can make it much clumsier than that. Peter Piper, Peter Piper. You can hear Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. This one's got good protection, so you're not going to hear much. But you saw with uh, tissue. So, how do you do that then? Well, really, I think it's just old school and good singing technique. Uh, is not having all this air waiting because the air actually is controlled by the, the uh, muscles of inspiration and ex exhalation. Uh, so you haven't got this weight of air waiting to rush through the whole time and then every time you open your lips, it comes flying out and hits the diaphragm. Same with the who, who, who. If you're doing that kind of thing, you want that sound, you're going to have to have it and manage some other way with the second prong of the attack. The second line of, I think I'd rather say, defence against pops and plosives is the positioning of the mic. I'm going to use a Neumann uh, KMS 104 Plus and switch off 33. So now I'm on this, on the Neumann. Obviously the further away the mic is, the less of an issue the pops are going to be because the blast of breath will be dispersed. Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. The issue, of course, you're not going to do that on most stages. Well, sometimes you can, but mostly you're going to be here or closer. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to be clumsy and show you the, the differences here. If I have it straight on, Peter Piper picked a peck. Woo! Peter Piper picked a peck. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Peter Piper picked a peck. So quite blubbery and blustery, which I find a bit uh, distracting. Some people say, bring it down here. Peter Piper picked a peck. 
Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who? Peter Piper. Still a bit blubbery and blustery. What I've said before, and it still seems to hold to me, remember this one isn't on, is I find it the side. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Who do you think you're fooling? Who? Who? Who do you think you're fooling? Peter Piper picked a peck. Very close. Peter Piper picked a peck. What I'm going to do now then is move it around and you'll hear the, the differences. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper. 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 Who do you think you're fooling? Who? 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 Seems clear to me then that this is the best option. Does it change the sound much? Does it change the sound? 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 I got closer there. Does it change the sound? So that changed it. Does it change the sound? Does it change the sound? Does it change the sound? Possibly subtly in that area, I'm not certain. But preferable to thumping and bluster and stuff. The other thing, I think, if I drop my hand, natural styly, and let me just bring my hand up in a natural place, what happened? Hi. Oh. Pretty much perfect. In front here, I bring my hand up and then I have to do a little bit of that, which is okay, but I can feel stuff going on here. To me, this just seems to be the way to go. Find out for yourself. Spend the time, get yourself some headphones, some nice track, and try and enjoy it and just move it around and notice. Control it with your voice as well. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Who do you think are falling? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Who do you think are falling? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You understand? Moving on. If all that's too much, play with it. But if it's all too much and you're dancing and you're moving and it's just you just can't get it together, really. There are some other lines of defence. Some more practical than others. I mean, you could, if it's in a studio anyway, you could use one of these as well. I haven't done this before. Let's just see. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Very effective. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Peter Piper picked a peck. Who? 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 Very effective, but not very practical on stage. This came off a road. Peter Piper, 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 Peter Piper. Very effective as well. However, not very practical on stage. The other thing you can do is, in a studio, of course, you can zone in on that bit and reduce it and all, all sorts of wizardry. Again, you know, really, I think, mostly here, mostly there, and leave yourself less, you know, either in post or out of the PA speakers. What I could do is reduce the bass. Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. Who, who, who? Of course, not going to work so much for that. Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper, bringing the bass up above zero. Peter Piper, watch your speakers or your ears. Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. So you can hear what it does there. Back on the uh, 33. I'm going to do a little test at now, after this. This is more or less the end of this. And some of you might not be interested on these, what I noticed about these different types of filters. Everything you do that you put in front, it's already got stuff in front. It's got foam and grills and this one's got... 105 hasn't got any foam it's got multi layers of grills this has got multi layers of grills i prefer grills to foam everything not surprisingly you put between that and the diaphragm does affect the sound to some extent how much that bothers you or matters 
It's your decision. But obviously anything you put there. So these do, I've done tests with these which are good, but they do take some little clarity and something at the top off. So I would say to you then, my advice, control as best you can here without making yourself unhappy or distracted. Combine it with your understanding after you've played with it, or the particular mic perhaps you've got, and then you're in a pretty good position, really, um, not to have to do stuff which is going to alter the sound. I'm talking probably about people who are into high-end mics anyway. Uh, so that's my advice to you. I'm going to go on now and look at these filters just very briefly, and I'll just tell you what I noticed about them. I'll show you right now. So that's the end of the tutorial, if you will. The road one, if you can see through it, lovely. Somehow, if you can see through it, I think it must be quite sonically transparent, but then, of course, you can see through glass. So if I put my hand here and go, whoo, whoo, of course, you're not going to hear it on this, you understand, because it's at the side. So I'm just tell I have to tell you what I sense here. Who, 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 who. What I feel out of the other side is as if the blast has been dispersed, which you'd want, and it's as if someone has just gone up to your hand and gone, just breathed out very gently. I feel the warmth and something obviously travelling. Fine layer on the front catches the light. It's quite attractive. And then a more a coarser and more rigid layer on the back. Wrong way around. Who, 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 who. Very similar. I'm aware of the warmth of uh, obviously air, breath moving. The slightest wouldn't really call it a blast, slightest breeze if you like. A lot use foam. You can get ones which you put outside. This is one that's designed to go underneath the um, the basket. So if I do similar thing, thing here as best I can. Who, 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 who. Very similar in terms of dissipating the breath and just leaving um, that warm, slight warm breeze in there. My feeling is that That slight uh, raggedness, and also I feel sometimes with foam, the blast hitting the foam creates a bit of that. So all in all, I prefer the grades of mesh. I think they do a better job. They're probably more expensive. I'm going to finish with uh, a little bit of baloney. You see, my baby calls me Mr. Baloney. But I like to believe my baby's only bluffing. So here it comes. I'm a bit fascinated by what's going on. You're trying to stop air, but you're trying to allow air unadulterated. So how are you going to do that? It must be to do with the speeds, I'm guessing, but sound travels at 700, what is it? F so it must be the slower p, 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 which certainly isn't travelling at 700 odd miles an hour, that you're aiming to break, break that up whilst allow the rest through. And I don't know how you go about it. But I do wonder, with these grills and and what have you, whether if you zoom, zoomed in, 
are these uh, shaped aerodynamically every little part of that grill and then the one underneath because I'm thinking the air is going to hit this, these wires and flow round them and then hit the finer ones flow round them are they shaped and smoothed so that it minimises turbulence would that help? what helps? I don't know but I imagine the air moving over them must cause some turbulence microscopically and thus some noise. What does the foam do? Is it very special foam? It's not all that expensive. Is there more further to go with the design of these things? Now we've got computers and phenomenal engineering. Will you find that every one of these layers is sort of aerodynamically shaped and then aerodynamically shaped slightly differently for the residual amount of breath that still comes through and then the next one they have finer but everything polished and anyway i think that's enough of that i'm, I'm going to go have a glass of wine so I, I hope that um the first part is of some some practical use i, I, th I think it's worth worthwhile depending on your style of singing but uh, anyway